Good evening, students. You there? Test, hello? Hey, am I coming through? You guys hear me all right? Hey, you hear me? All right, good. I trust we're all having a good time tonight. If you're new here, you might think this is a little strange. If you're not new here, this is really strange because I'm not on the stage. So for those of you who don't know me, my name's Alvin Parasita. I'm in charge of our worship and tech team around here. And let's give it up for our worship and tech team. They did an awesome job tonight, right? Worship was powerful, it was impactful, that was great. See, tonight we're talking about a deep question, which I don't have a f- enough time to fully answer, but I'm hoping to give us a starting point where you guys can kick off and do your own study and learn from it. And that is basically, what is God's will for my life? What does God want for me? What job does he want? What relationships does he want for me? Now, in full disclosure, this is something I struggle with personally. Like in, like in Christianity, this seems very simple, but it's not. It's one of the more difficult things that we can do. And I often joke with my family and friends that, like, for me, I wish God would speak to me in the ways like he did in Daniel. In the book of Daniel, if you've ever read it, there's a hand that comes and writes on the wall in blood and gives a message for a king. Or kind of like, in, I'm walking up here because these mics, are, these, this is going to sound real bad. See? Yeah. Awesome. Um, if you've read Numbers, there's a story where a donkey turns around and talks to Balaam. And I often joke like, okay, God, why can't you just be that candid with me? Maybe not write in blood on my wall, but like a nice text from God to say, yo, this is God. You should probably not be doing this or start doing this. Or like while I'm playing catch with my kids in the yard, like a squirrel just kind of like walks up because like I think if it was anything else, like a snake or a raccoon, I might freak out, but a squirrel would be okay. Like a squirrel came up and said, hey, 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 what's up? This is God's divine plan for your life. All right, God. You see, he doesn't often work like that because if he did, we'd want to be in control of how. See, we want God's will, but we want it our way. We want to see God. Did you guys catch that? Good, we'll come back to that later. So our take home point tonight is the voice of God is only part of the relationship. We need to have the presence of God. You see, I feel like we overemphasize this aspect of God's will for our life because if you were to tease this out to an extreme and just follow me, like if God had one job that he had in mind for me to do for my life and I wasn't in God's will and I was doing that job and that was someone else's job, that person would then displace somebody else who would displace somebody else. And that's a domino effect we can't undo. It would be even worse if I were to marry someone outside of God's will. Like, let's tease that out. I marry someone else's wife that God intended for them, and we have kids. Not only did I screw up that relationship, but those kids were never supposed to be born. They're going to marry kids, have kids that were never supposed to be born. That person's wife that I took, he's going to marry someone. They're going to have kids, and it's just going to be a whole cluster that we can't undo. So to say that God has like this specific plan for our lives is a little absurd because when you read God's word, we have this idea of free will and we're not talking about that tonight. So if there's any Calvinists in the room, I'm not getting into it with you. There's like three people who understand that. But anyways, (laughs) oftentimes we want to think we're Moses. We want to think we're like David, that we had this, this, God's going to just speak to us and we're just going to know Maybe you're not Moses. Maybe you're one of the Israelites walking around in the desert. And that's God's will for you is to follow and to do the job in front of you. Because I want to be Moses. I want to talk to God face to face. I don't know if I could handle it. I might have a heart attack and die because you meet anyone who says that they met God. They, next verse is they fall flat on their face. That seems a little terrifying that you meet someone and you're just down on the ground. But it could be cool. So, what is God's will for your life? I believe we find that in 2 Thessalonians 13. It says, We ought to always give thanks to God for you, brothers beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit 
the belief in the truth, that to this he has called you through, the, through our gospel, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold, fo- and hold to the traditions that were taught to you by us, either spoken or written in our le- letters. See, God chose you, and he saved you, and you are to be sanctified. You're supposed to believe in the truth, spread the gospel, and obtain God's glory. That seems pretty easy, right? I think God, it seems that simple because I don't want to be someone like Nehemiah. Does anyone know the story of Nehemiah? Yeah, he was told to go rebuild the walls of Jerusalem with no cranes or bulldozers. He's like, God's like, hey, you're going to go do this by hand in the middle of the desert. Thank God I'm not Nehemiah. Um, Thank God I'm not Jonah where he's like, hey, I'm going to have you go, go speak to your enemies in Syria and save them. And to put this in perspective, if you've never read the book of Jonah or you don't have full perspective, Jonah going to Nineveh would be like a Jew going into Nazi Germany and trying to convert people to Judaism during the height of World War II. Like, that's what God asked Jonah to do. He's like, go to your enemies, tell them about me so they can get to know me. And Jonah's like, no, I'm good. I'm going to go this way. The complete opposite direction, and then get swallowed by a fish, which seems disgusting. But, you know, I thank God that's not what he called me to do. But if we look at what he's called us to do, to be sanctified, to be like Jesus, what does that look like? Like, all we got to do is what Jesus did, which was love everyone like no one's ever loved anybody before. That seems really doable, right? Serve people like no one has ever served anyone. You know, maybe, I'll, maybe I will take Nineveh. Maybe, maybe I will take the walls because I don't know if I could love everyone the way Jesus Love them. I don't think I could serve people the way that Jesus served us. You see, at the beginning of this message, I wasn't on this platform, and that was for a reason. And there's a moment where we shut off the mic. It's for a reason. Because we either want the presence of God without Him speaking to us and directing us, or we want the voice of God without His presence in our lives. Does that make sense? A little bit more sense now that I wasn't on stage. So, What I mean by that is like if if we have God's voice in our life, but we don't know who God is, we have a GPS that's kind of telling us where to go, but we don't have to listen to it. It's just a voice talking into nothingness, and you can choose to listen to it if you want, or you can have the presence and not have God's voice in your life, which is like that one annoying friend that never really tells you what they truly think. They're just really passive, and they seem to agree with you all the time. That's kind of what it's like if you have God God's presence in your life, but you don't have his voice directing you. And see, it's like being a prince of the king, but not submitting to the king itself. Because God's never going to accept half. God wants to be Lord of everything or Lord of nothing. He will not share that throne of your life and your heart with anyone or anything else. That's why he says he's a jealous God, and he's jealous for you. Which is awesome, but like, Here's the secret about God. God doesn't need you. We don't add any value to who God is, which is awesome because we don't need to do anything to be accepted by who he is. It's not what we do. Because if we were like Jonah or we were like like Nehemiah, Okay, God, I I built the walls. I'm done. I fulfilled your will for my life. I'm going to go do what I want. Okay, God, I preached the gospel to these people. I checked off the list. I don't need to do anything else. Okay, God, I healed this woman. She's now not lame. I raised this kid from the dead. I did your will for my life. Now Now the rest is mine. But if we know God's will intricately like that, then we're just checking boxes. We miss the relationship that he really wants for us because... We're not wanted, we're not needed by God in any way, shape, or form, but we are wanted because of who he is. You see, how do we know what that looks like? It's kind of like this little thing right here. Does anyone know what that is? It's a microphone, right? Anyone knows how that works? A little bit, but let's, let's give you a, a deeper. So this little wireless pack here, goes to that back room where there's a wireless transmitter. That transmitter goes down to a Rio, which sends a Cat5 cable from that room back to that board. That board does some crazy effects that make me sound halfway normal. 
um, and then sends a Cat5 cable back there to three different amps, which amplifies it and sends it up to those, those, and all of these. Was that as simple as you thought it was? No. <laughs> and what about these lights? These lights are a DMX cable that runs down to a computer down there that controls the color, the tint, and all that stuff. You can change how bright or how dark they are. This mic is your prayer life. It seems simple, but it's not. You see, if you have the image of God, you have a friend. Now, if you have the voice of God, go ahead, Kayla, but you don't have an image, you don't know what you're praying to. You don't know what God's will for your life is because you don't know who God is. You don't have a full description of who God is. It's only through his word, <coughs> excuse me, when, he re re when we read his word and he illuminates who he is, ah, we see who God is. I'm not saying I'm God. Please don't take it that way. That's not what I was trying to do with that illustration. But it's only when we open God's word and we read who he is and we understand who he is and we pray, do we get the image of who God is and the voice that interacts with that. And when then we can discern what God's will for is for our lives. Because God's word never contradicts his will. If we have his word, but we don't pray, we don't hear what he says to us. <coughs> I'm not as fluid as Alex. I don't shut that mic off in time. Uh, <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. But if we are constantly praying, but we're never reading, we don't know what we're praying to. <coughs> we don't know who we're praying to or what we're praying for or if we're praying for something that is God's will for our lives because we don't know. It's only when we pair both of these practice to, practices together do we finally start to see the world the way God intended it to be and that is to love people, to share the gospel and to grow in relationship, for him, and grow in relationship with him. So that brings us to our next step which should be pretty obvious after that and that is this. Good. Tech team, next step. Anyways, oh, you're awesome. You just don't want to hear me cough into this. Anyways, they'll get to it. Our next step is I will read my Bible and pray daily to align my will with God's will. Seems pretty simple, right? So maybe you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you're like this whole idea of praying and reading the Bible is just foreign to you. Well, that's great because you can do that tonight. You can learn who he is by opening his word, by going to a small group, and you can accept him as your Lord and Savior through what we say at New Life here is the ABCs, and that's admit that I'm a sinner and I need Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, and see, confess that Jesus is Savior and Lord and commit to following him in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's that simple. But like we talked about with the microphone, and like we talked about living like Jesus, the Christian life is simple, but it's not easy. It's daily finding time to open God's word and read. It's taking that time to set apart, to not scroll uh, YouTube or TikTok or Instagram and take that time to pray and to pursue God. So if you're willing to do that, say this next step with me. And that is, I will read my Bible and pray daily to align God's will with my life. You see, it's, it's a daily thing. When you meet someone new, oftentimes you don't just become instant best friends. A relationship takes work. And to know what God wants for your life, you have to invest into that relationship with him. It's only when we can do that regularly do we get to know what God's will is for life. If you know if that person that wants to date is someone you should be dating. Because the Bible gives you advice on dating, gives you advice on marriage, gives you advice on career. It doesn't help, me for me to stand, help you for me to stand up here and just tell you what to do. You don't build a relationship that way. Open, God, opens, ugh, open God's word and look for yourself. Proverbs is full of it. Psalms are full of it. The Old Testament, the New Testament, all has stuff that's applicable to your life today. But you have to be willing to open it up and, and look. 
It's a relationship. If you don't invest time into it, it won't ever yield any fruit in your life. But the more you pour into it, the deeper that relationship will get. With that being said, I'm going to pray. We can go to small group. Father God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for these students. I thank you for the new ones and the ones returning. I just pray that you would bless our small group time, that you would bless them, that the discussion would be fruitful, that they would be able to find time to invest into your word, to invest into prayer, and to invest in the relationship with you. Uh, I just pray that you bless the students, that your spirit would be here during small group, that you would lead the discussions, that um, we would leave here a new creation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.